Hey there everyone, just wanted to do a quick walkthrough of how I set up my Dirty Wave Mate React Visualizer using Ableton Live, Unreal Engine 5.4, and OBS. There are a few prerequisites required in order to get things up and running, so I figured I'd break down everything I use to get things set up. The first variable being the synthesizer itself, the Dirty Wave Mate, which is a portable tracker sequencer and synthesizer all powered by a Teensy microcontroller. Now, if you're not able to get your hands on either the V1 or V2 version of the Mate, it's actually possible to build one yourself, as the creator of the Mate, Trash80, is cool enough to make the software side of things free and open source to those who are willing to take the time to build it themselves in whatever fashion they see fit. The second variable would be the 3D model of the Mate, which I bought on Sketchfab with some additional UV wrapping and texturing work, getting the mate up and running inside of Unreal is a pretty quick and painless process, all thanks to how efficient David was in setting up the 3D model for animation purposes. The third variable needed are some blueprints and Max for Live devices as supplied by the Sem and Tris AV Club. They've already gone through the headache of getting some custom blueprints up and running, along with some Max for Live devices that convert the MIDI data into OSC data for Unreal via your computer's port and IP address. The fourth and final variable would be OBS. The Mate has this really handy feature where you're able to plug it into a computer and use that as a monitor instead of the built-in screen on the actual piece of hardware. This is really cool as with OBS it's then possible to screen record the Mate session which can then be brought into Unreal and used as a video texture on the screen object. So with a little bit of blueprint scripting, it's possible to trigger the screen recording to start at the exact same time you hit play in the Ableton session alongside the exported stems from the Mate. Therefore, syncing the digital version of the Mate alongside the stems and MIDI channels for further synchronization purposes. Now, to get started with the environments, I like to take a kit bashing approach when building my environments as I'm not a 3D modeler, nor do I really wish to be. So I like to scour the internet for free Creative Commons assets to use on websites such as Sketchfab. If I'm not able to find what I'm looking for after going through that process, I like to purchase assets from kitbashing companies such as Kitbash3D and Big Medium Small, to name a few examples. I've also acquired quite a few packs of both environmental assets and characters from various Humble Bundle sales, as every month they offer some really great deals where you can get thousands of dollars worth of stuff for around $30 to $45. So considering I often lack the ability to model and texture assets in $10 to $400 worth of my time, I'm more than happy to buy assets, not only to save myself that time, but to also help support other talented independent creators as well. So in this particular video, I made use of the Modular Abandoned Hospital Pack by Hivemind on the Epic Store, as acquired through a previous Humble Bundle Pack. I also made use of some gore and horror props from a company named Dystopia Interactive on the ArtStation Marketplace, along with a bunch of characters from Stigma Studios on the Epic Marketplace. Stigma Studios make these really rad character models that are perfect for horror, sci-fi, and dark fantasy purposes, so I figured it would fit the tone of the song pretty well. Once all the desired assets are acquired and put into my Unreal project file, I then like to just mess around with all the modular pieces building out an environment, kind of like playing with a more complicated LEGO kit. In this case, since I wanted the piece to be one long continuous shot, I thought building out a rundown hallway that the camera could slowly travel down would be a good direction to move in. Especially since I knew I wanted the Dirty Wave Mate to be the centerpiece for the whole video. That way, it would be possible to watch the entire Mate session play out while all the reactive elements go on around it. Once I got the hallway built out, I then started placing props and decals amongst the environment to help it feel more full and lived in as without these extra assets, everything feels pretty naked. From here, I started placing various character models around with animations from either Mixamo or from the Epic Marketplace. These resources helped speed up the process immensely as hand animating a bunch of characters would alone take weeks 
and since they were all going to be out of focus anyways, I figured it would be the most efficient approach to take. After all the environmental variables were taken care of, the next step was setting up the Dirty Wave Mate model with the screen recorded session using the browser player as provided by Dirty Wave. To achieve that, I then needed to set up a blueprint that not only adds a float cycle to the Mate's model for animation purposes, but a means to trigger the video once I hit play in the Ableton session. One quick note, as of Unreal 5.4, there's currently a bug with the media player where it won't actually start playing the video file as expected when triggering the start point with a MIDI signal, most notably when creating a new Unreal project. However, I found that changing the targeted RHI from DirectX 12 to DirectX 11 and then back to DirectX 12 seems to resolve this issue for whatever reason. Hopefully this bug gets fixed in a future update, as it's a bit of an annoying workaround. With that being said, once the initial Unreal session was set up, I then hopped back over to Ableton to transcribe the exported stems as MIDI channels, so I could then trigger various effects inside of Unreal Engine. Along with that, it's required to dedicate one of the MIDI channels to trigger the video file to start inside of Unreal. I've also found when setting this session up, that there's actually a very slight delay, a quarter note's worth to be precise, that Unreal has when starting the video file. So in order to keep things synced as best as I could, it was required to move the entire session a little bit ahead of the initial MIDI note that tells Unreal to start playing the video file. This seemed to resolve the issue I was running into when trying to get everything to trigger on the first downbeat of the Ableton session. Once the Ableton session was all ready to go, the final step was setting up all the reactive elements to take place within Unreal. Now, in my previous videos, I had built some blueprints that allow for MIDI notes to trigger Niagara and Cascade effects in both static locations and in random locations, as determined by a random point in bounding box. So with these blueprints already set up, it was just a matter of choosing the appropriate effects needed for each of the instrumental variables. For example, Blood spikes spawning in random locations as triggered by the wobble bass, slash attacks being spawned in random locations as triggered by the bass stabs, or impact hits being triggered by the various percussion elements like the kick, snare, and hi-hats. From here, it's all about placing the effects around the environment while being parented to the camera's movement for consistency purposes. After everything is all set up effects-wise, it then comes down to recording the final output in real time as the Ableton and Unreal session plays out. I personally love that this all works in real time, as if I were to render a 4 minute video with an offline renderer at say, 10 seconds of frame in 4K, it would take around 20 hours just to get one take rendered, as opposed to getting it all done in real time in just 4 minutes. This then allows me to iterate 100 times more than previously done, which is incredibly creatively liberating, as it completely takes the stress off of the rendering process, while also encouraging a more improvisational spirit, since it's possible to adjust anything more or less immediately. I feel as if I've only just scratched the surface with what can be done using Unreal for reactive visualization purposes, so if anyone has any questions or ideas for future videos they'd like to see, please feel free to leave a comment and consider subscribing. Thanks!